Yo, what is going on fam? So we're back again today and today we're working on the Elantra N back there. Today we're going to be switching up the wheel and tire setup for what is perhaps the most aggressive wheel and tire setup you can run without major modification. So without further ado, let's get into it. So uh, before I get into the specs of these wheels and all the stuff I had to buy to make the setup work, I do want to say um, I'm going to have all these things linked in the description as well, the comments. They will be uh, Amazon affiliate links. So if you do want to go to replicate my setup, please do use my links because I get a little kickback that charges, well, that won't add any extra cost to you. Okay, so you're just helping me out for the information I gave you. But my wheels here are Inky RPF1s, okay? So uh, these wheels are 18 by nine and a half plus 45 offset, which in the Elantra community is known as like the most aggressive uh, wheel, well, and that you can run. Um, they are five by one, 1 1.3, um, and they are pretty light wheel. I have um, a, a TPS sensors that will work with the OEM uh, tire monitoring system as well, um, linked in the bio. For tires, we're running 265, 35, 18s. Where's my little, well, oh, and they're all backwards. But right here you can see, 265, 35, rim stop, 18. 200 tread wear Kumo V7 30 tires. So I went with these tires for a couple reasons. Number one being their price. They're a very affordable 200 tread wear tire. Um, another one, they run a bit narrow a narrower than other 200 tread wear tires i mean excuse me than other 265 with tires so hopefully that gives me a better chance of actually fitting this wheel and tire combo so real nice setup and i'll get y'all prices in a moment another thing that i had to purchase was uh, lug nuts that would work with the wheels i went with these circuit performance steel lug nuts remember you do not want to run aluminum uh, lug nuts because they strip pretty easily once you take them off a few times we got these hub centric rings. So these are going to align the wheel perfectly on the hub. If you, um, if you're gonna be running aftermarket wheels, you definitely need a pair of these. These uh, specific ones fit perfectly with the Inky RPF ones onto the Elantra end. And the specs for these are right here. Um, another thing that I got was this PowerFlex front camber kit because in order to make the setup work, we do need to add some additional front camber and the front uh, camber is not adjustable from the factory, but the rear camber is adjustable from the factory. So we are going to try and get these bad boys fitted. Um, first things first, I'm going to try to adjust the camber um, in the front. I'll put that front camber bolt right here. Um, and adjust it to give me maximum camber as well as in the rear there is a camber that looks like an eccentric bolt right here that I'll be able to rotate and bring out this whole lower arm this way and that should give me more negative camber in the rear so I'm still at stock ride height stock suspension everything else so let me go ahead get my camber adjusted then we'll go for a test fit and then a test drive so we got uh, the front camera bolts in, pretty simple. You just take the old uh, top, um, a strut mounting bolt right here that attaches the knuckle to the strut. You take that out and then you go ahead and you put in your new uh, camera bolt here. Um, and then from there, you just go to line up the tab with the load and then you rotate it. Um, and then you'll see this part of the knuckle go inwards and that's giving you negative camber. There's a bunch of uh, videos on our YouTube. All, if you just look up uh, how to install camber bolts. So all vehicles with McPherson struts are the same. So I didn't want to take up too much time. Coming to the back though, uh, this is the rear a suspension. So you have two adjustments you can make. Your toe adjustment is here, and your camber adjustment is made here. So this is just a rear eccentric. Literally, all you have to do is loosen up this nut on this side. This is a 19, and this is a 22. And then when you rotate this actual eccentric bolt, it's gonna push this whole lower arm to the left. So I'll show you right quick. 
So I'm having some issues with the rear camber adjustment. I'm gonna need an alignment machine, so I'm gonna have to drop this thing off to get aligned. But moving on to the next step is going to be our actual hub centric rings. Like I mentioned before, this is just so the wheel sits uh, perfectly center on the hub. They just go on like that before you actually install your wheel. So if you do or decide to go with these uh, RPF ones, just make sure you pick up a set of these. Super easy. Don't get plastic ones either. Um, you definitely want the aluminum ones because if you track your car and your brakes get too hot, it's possible that your plastic ones could melt. It's possible, possible. So again, these put on. Then I'll get the wheels put on, and then I'll take it for. Well, I'll check fitment, and then we'll go for our first draw. I know I'm teasing the hell out of you, but I wanted to give um, a quick weight comparison. So this is the new wheel and tire setup. Don't mind my Jerry rig. So Inky RPF 1, 265 Kumos. It weighs 43.8 pounds. So now I'm gonna grab my OEM wheel and tire setup and see how much that weighs. All right, got the OEM wheel with the OEM tire on, the OEM Michelin. So let's see what she comes in at. Let me see. 54.6 so that's almost 12 pounds that we're saving per side so let's say 11 either way we're sitting you know we do the math that's 44 pounds of unsprung weight that we're being cut off the car oh shit you gotta see it oh shit it's not on the ground yet it's not on the ground yet but man oh if this setup works oh my god i can't wait to see how this car feels <laughs> Here she is, ladies and gents, with the wheels on, and boy, it is a looker. So, the first thing I noticed with this setup, the caliper, the barrel cl clearance is really small. You got millimeters there. I drove it around, no issues at all. Um, if you got a, a rock stuck between there, it could be a bit of an issue, but yeah, not a lot of clearance, but what I can say about this setup is um, it fits pretty good. You're definitely gonna need camber to make it look right. If you guys can see there, this is how this setup is meeting the fender. Um, I maxed out my camber bolts in the front. You can see we're tucked in pretty decently. Right. Oh shit, you scared the hell out of me, Letty. Cat scared me. But and then bottom of the tire is poking. The back definitely needs some more camber. I'm gonna actually take this to get an alignment. But you can see right there how we're sitting. Um, just a little bit of poke, but a little bit more camber would definitely tuck the top of that tire, make that look a lot better. Um, honestly, the car could benefit from, I think some lowering springs, you know, to really get that fitment right. But right now it looks pretty good. Um, on my little test drive, I made sure to go uh, all the way left and all the way right, lock the lock with the steering wheel, no rubbing at all. I did drive it pretty uh, spiritly, even though it does need an alignment, but I had no rubbing in the rear or anything like that. I can't really speak to going over curbs or something like that on a racetrack, but right now, it's pretty good. But, oh man, that looks absolutely beautiful. My favorite view of this setup so far is this view with like the Elantra lettering delete in the rear and the way the sun is just hitting. Oh my God, looks so good. I want to do a quick cost analysis of what this setup actually um, did cost me. Keep in mind, I will have everything linked down in the description below. And if you do use my links, I do get a little kickback from it. So I'd appreciate it. What's up, baby girl? All right. So let's start with the wheels. The wheels were $1,380 themselves. The tires were $784. The TPS sensors, so that way you're, um, and so that way uh, you can still read your tire pressure um, with the car, those were $50. The hub centric rings to make sure that the wheel is actually centered on the hub. Those were $12. The lug nuts were $23. Keep in mind, those are steel. You do not want aluminum. And the camber bolts, that way you can get a bit of camber in the front. Those were $27. So the grand total, 
that goes to $2,276 for the setup, which I think for the value for what you're getting, this really meaty and aggressive setup, um, not too bad of a price at all. Um, definitely on the more affordable end and you know, a lot more tire with a lot with uh, what we're saving 11 pounds, 12 pounds per corner of unsprung weight as well. So I'm not seeing it, any negatives to the setup yet, but I'll, you know, if I, if I do come up on anything I just don't like about it, I'll be sure to post in the comments to keep this uh, video relevant with my experience. But Jesus, look at that view with the little, um, uh, with the roof spoiler and the, uh, and like the side wind deflectors, oh my God, it looks pretty. But yeah, that's gonna be all for this video. Um, if you did like it, please make sure to like it. Um, if you wanna see more Elantra content, please make sure to subscribe. I got more coming on the way. We're gonna be tracking this thing soon, but that's all I got for now. Take it easy, I'm out. Yeah. Huh. Coach.